Well, today, New York City escaped default narrowly. Ali led a protest for Hurricane Carter and Patty Hearst reportedly engaged in group sex in the SLA. Details at 11. Good evening, I'm Bill Bonds, Eyewitness News. They've got a fire on the Jersey Shore tonight that you can see and smell for miles, and we're going to have a special live report. Tom? A woman and her maid have been found murdered in Greenwich, Connecticut. Those stories, Bill at the map, Sal and Ali, Nixon love letters. Scott Meredith here says he has in his possession copies of 22 love letters written by former President Nixon at the height of Watergate to a woman whom he will not identify. I have in my hands copies of five letters. And one of them reads, Hi, hun. To answer your question, no, I am not sick. But Mr. Meredith is very careful on how he answers questions regarding these letters. There is... Uh considerable uh, evidence in the letters that they are love letters because they talk about uh, how much he misses her and uh, they, there's one letter which says uh, uh, I, uh, I'll see you soon, I have to, that sort of thing. There is also some sexual content. John? Well Tom, we went to the area to talk to the people there as well as the police to find out if this kind of thing happens often. And it was here at the corner of West 50th Street and Broadway that Kim was allegedly abducted by Bobby D. Haywood. And just around the corner is the Consulate Hotel, where her abductor took her to meet the prostitute who was to break her in. We tried to talk to the manager of the hotel about the incident, but he ran from our cameras. Just down the street from the Consulate is the Broadway Burlesque Theater, a peep show, massage parlor. This is where Kim was allegedly brought to turn her tricks. Tony, the manager, claimed to know nothing. Supposedly there was a young girl that was brought here, and they were trying to force her to be a prostitute. Is this something that happens often, do you know, that, that there are pimps out on the street trying to bring girls in no, to force them to be prostitutes? We don't take them here. Hey, look, don't, don't be taking my picture here. So I, you don't have any comments to what happened? Happened. Well, fortunately for Kim, she managed to slip away from the seedy place, by that time clad only in underpants and blouse. But A human head and no body was found this morning near the LaGuardia Airport interchange in the Grand Central Parkway. And a little while later, a human body with no head was found about four miles away in Rigo Park, Queens. Phil Barno reports. The victim's head was found first at about 6.15 a.m. at the 97th Street entrance to the Grand Central Parkway. The rest of the body was discovered at about 8 outside the Serio Brothers trucking garage on Maurice Avenue in Maspeth. The medical examiner found no cause of death other than decapitation, no fatal knife or gunshot wounds on the body. There was a slash on the forearm which detectives feel might have been a defensive wound. Police say there have been no other decapitation killings in the area lately. Right now, detectives feel there's no reason to think this was a gangland rub-out, but that's one possibility they'll look into. Police describe this as an ideal place to dump a body. Whoever it is that likes to look into windows late at night or early in the morning and fire darts at women alone, he ranges all over southern Westchester County. Yonkers, down to Dobbs Ferry, over to East Chester, and up here in the town of Greenberg. Jim Van Sickle, News Center 4. Uh, I came out the door and there was a, uh, a man holding a gun on somebody lying down right over there and saying, don't move, and the man said, I'm a cop, call the place. Residents on the block expressed no great fear or anxiety about living there after the shootings. They said that all things considered, they don't think their block more crime-ridden than any other. Schools were completely demolished, and efforts are being made to set up some form of schooling system that, uh, in the tent camps. Attempts have been unsuccessful because parents don't want to leave their children. The Minister of Education's only concern is to keep track of the kids so they won't wander into dangerous areas or to get lost. If you'd like to keep your dinner plate full of homegrown vegetables, you don't have to wait until summer. You can get started right away because today, Floss and Stan are at the Kichuan Research Laboratories where they're going to show you how you can plant an excellent cool weather crop. It's time now to put in your cool weather vegetables. That's where a July 13th train crash killed two women and injured some 30 others. Who says Dynamo works better than Tide? I do. Well, Doc Severinsen got his divorce today, but it cost him the ranch and a whole lot more. The flashy Tonight Show star promised to give his ex-wife their horse ranch in Sussex County, New Jersey, plus $70,000 for her share in some horses and property on a Texas ranch, plus $75,000 a year alimony, plus $35,000 for her attorney, plus... 
$45,000 in arrears, plus life insurance policies worth $168,500, plus shares in a Florida business, plus a Cadillac and a Bentley. Whew. Bill? Yeah. I'm going to start taking trumping lessons. Oh. i got to meet his wife real soon. Sal? There's one thing he has not tried to improve. All those teeth are his very own. Governor Carter has no cavities, and he has no cat teeth, has a, a very good smile. Yeah, he takes very good care of his teeth. He, uh, if all my patients would take as good a care of his teeth, they'd probably have as excellent teeth as he does. For the record, it should be noted that Carter uses Crest toothpaste. Jaws strikes again. The mechanical monster that starred in the motion picture sensation Jaws is now earning his keep in a lagoon on Universal Lot at Hollywood. A painter was touching up the great shark's fin when somehow the fish went into his act and began crashing through the water, gnashing at the air. It was quite a ride for the touch-up painter until someone turned off the shark. The man may have back injuries. The fish is okay. But for Muhammad Ali, there's a flat no for those who asked him to join a cherry-spitting contest in Eau Claire, Michigan. Ali, who lives nearby, reportedly said cherry-spitting is against his religion. President Ford's getting some religion in the form of the world's largest tamale, sent to him by a Mexican who remembers how Mr. Ford was given a tamale by crowds outside the Alamo, and he tried to eat it, shuck and all. The man said Mr. Ford should enjoy the 80-pound Titanic tamale if he doesn't eat the shuck. I don't know how long NASA can keep it quiet, but it has found life on Mars in the form of little, yes, green men, and has even conversed with them. Alarmed, it has locked the transcripts away in the national interest, but I've obtained parts of one, and it goes like this. NASA, have you ever tried to reach the Earth, green men? Oh, yes, we come to the Earth often, but the atmosphere makes us invisible and nobody sees us. So... Those of you who have your 30 cent tokens in hand, be glad you do. The free ride may be over. Betty, it is delightful to have you back here for a few moments. You're, you're visiting us for how long? Just this week. I'll be here today and Thursday. Good. Good. Just wanted to see if you were all okay. I've been watching you from afar and you looked all right, well, we... but I <laughs> wanted to come down and see. <laughs> we need you to come back and shape us up every so often. <laughs> now, uh, could we have standbys when the, when the holiday is over? This is, this is a holiday <laughs> show, ladies and gentlemen. It was the day after the party and here at the station, there's no one around. They're all on probation. <laughs> Look at the relative humidity. That is not bad. 44% is not bad. The temperature, temperature humidity index is 77. What does that mean? That means that 65% of the people were uncomfortable today. Were you one of those 65%? Uh, it's hot in New England. It's hot in Ohio and Iowa. It's hot in Washington State. Now, you may not care if it's hot in Washington State, but you should. Because the, the air, our air, for the next five days is coming directly from Washington State. Now, there's no cool section here that might blow into our state. We're in for a good, hot spell. It's going to be hot, it's going to be humid, it's going to be hazy, it's going to be polluted. With our NATO allies moving to the left, the strategic value of the Azores takes on new importance. You can barely find the Azores in the middle of millions of square miles of ocean, but don't confuse their size with their importance. They have been a way station between Europe and America ever since Columbus stopped off there. 60 Minutes visited the Azores to find out why they are so important to our national security and to take a look at the growing movement there for independence from Portugal. It is a well-known place to a select group of Americans, those who fly our military aircraft. For 35 years, the Azores, docked in the Atlantic Ocean, have been a vital part of our worldwide defense strategy. Uh, the, the purpose behind an amendment like that is that we're not going to waste the clean air that we have because we are going to eventually use it in different parts of the country and it's going to uh, use this resource that belongs to all the people. I want yeah, to say something though. on this last question. On, I agree with the congressman that this is not an issue in the automobile. The automobile industry, at least Ford Motor Company, has recommended that California have tighter standards so that we could use new technology there to solve that issue and then apply it nationally. So I think the issue, as the congressman's indicated, is more stationary sources from industry. Well, what does Mr. Carls of the EPA think but, about Excuse that? me, just one well, minute. I think I, I'd like to interrupt and just say one thing. that I, I, I can't let Mr. Jensen get away with that fact. The single largest polluter that we have is the automobile. And that's the way it is. Monday, July 5th, 1976. This is Walter Cronkite, CBS News. Good night.